so now what i want you to take away from this class is reframing or looking very carefully at what mendel said but looking at it from a modern biological sense what are alleles what are genes where they are placed and mendel's postulates which is segregation which is basically to do with allele separating okay independent assortment which is to do with genes which are on different chromosomes if they are on different chromosomes they will assort independently okay now two genes on the same chromosome may not influence each other but they may not assort independently because when this chromosome if there is a second homologous chromosome over here what will end up happening is that pod shape plant height and flower position will basically be linked and because they are linked they will move to this whole set will move to a single sperm or a single egg okay so now hopefully you see the relevance of chromosomes humans let's say have uh, humans have 21 independent linked entities the entire uh, genetic information for god knows what reasons have been divided into 21 sets each set contains a set of anywhere between a few hundreds to a few thousand genes all linked together physically okay p has only seven so it has seven sets i start study the fruit fly the fruit fly has only four uh, pairs of chromosomes so they are only four four sets and a fruit fly has a, a, again around uh, 23000 genes so these 23000 genes are divided into these four sets which are linked and they move together during mitosis and meiosis so now let's come to the part which i think is a tricky part let's go to dominance and <laughs> recessiveness and to do go to dominance and recessiveness let's go to a classical mendelian cross i hope all of you have seen this at least once in school uh, in, in either 9th 10th 11th or 12th standard the cross is very simple what mendel did is he spent a lot of time making what are called as pure lines which are basically lines which bred true so he had plants which were let's say grown on the left hand corner of the field uh, which were always tall fine and he also grew by crossing uh, dwarf plants together again and again and again plants which were always dwarf fine now in his primary cross called as a monohybrid cross he took these true breeding tall plants and he took the true breeding dwarf plants and he crossed them together and in the next generation he found that all plants were tall they were there was no sign of any dwarf plant right then he selfed this uh, uh, tall plant now a true breeding tall plant always give tall plants but this particular tall plant which was a hybrid of the tall and the dwarf plant not showing any characteristic over here when crossed together showed and this is all uh, stuff you have studied in school showed a basic ratio of 3 is to 1 for tall plants is to dwarf plants so the dwarf characteristic magically reappeared in the f2 generation but it was not seen in the f1 generation and the generic logic is that if you say that a single gene is responsible for the height difference between these plants uh, dwarf versus uh, dwarf versus tall nobody is saying that the single gene is responsible for uh, the the total height of the plant it's just uh, shorter or longer that's the only difference and if we say that this gene can be assigned a name and we the name we assign this gene is the tall gene and this tall gene is somewhere on one of the chromosomes of the pea plant and we can argue that it is let us say over here in the pea plant then we say that the true breeding plant has two alleles tt and the dwarf plant also has two alleles of the same gene which is tt remember t t t small t small t capital t capital t are the same gene in the same location on 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 chromosomes and what is happening when you cross the capital t capital t with the small t small t is you are bringing together these two alleles and i'll draw this over here in the same plant so you have one capital t and you have one small t however the phenotype of a combination of these two discrete alleles is still a tall plant which means that the capital t dominates over the small t you don't see any dwarf plants however when you do a f2 generation 
you can get back the alleles and a simple punnett square which we will again go through tells you that if you use simple ideas of gametes being independent and the gametes are independent because of segregation because both these alleles go to independent sperms and eggs then a simple mathematical cross of punnett square tells you that the expected ratio if these independent alleles are not mixing is 3 is to 1 okay